Let us look inside ourselves for a revolution. And let us look to the novel. The thing about Nagy is that he's not just a novelist. I mean, he, he's a columnist, he's a journalist, he's an art critic. You know, he founded a, a theater space, an art magazine. I would describe Ahmed as a person that challenges taboos. And if you read Ahmed's work, you can definitely tell that it's about pushing the boundaries of what is acceptable societally or not. His novel, Using Life, had illustrations, you know, it was made into a multimedia show. It starts in a happy way where all these young people are celebrating the lack of surveillance and of security in the streets right after the revolution. And then it sinks into this whole dystopian Cairo that sucks everyone's soul, you know? Ahmed combined the taboo of sexuality and the taboo of drug use. Being arrested for him was not a surprise. What he was surprised about was that it wasn't his political commentary or activism, but rather a novel. Uh, there is someone who went to the police office and accused me for disturbing public morals and hurt him and hurt his feeling personally. We saw this is like a kind of uh, a comic case and the prosecution is going to close it. This is a novel. It has been approved by the Egyptian authorities uh, like a novel and published and sold out in all the Egyptian markets as a novel. The trial happened, he was acquitted, so everyone thought, you know, everyone took a breath and uh, the prosecutor was allowed two weeks to, to appeal, and they did. It was a shock. We thought that no one can break the Constitution, so it was shocking for us to hear the maximum sentence. He was transferred to prison. To have Ahmed Nagy be sentenced for fictional writing and being actually sent to jail for that, um, it's unprecedented, at least for Egypt, for this country. Persecuting Nagy means persecuting a generation, you know? I think that the, there is no future now for the freedom of expression in Egypt. It just doesn't stop at Ahmed, and that's what we are afraid of. This is the nightmare. I've spent months in that prison where he is right now, and I told him what anyone in this situation wants to hear, that there is solidarity behind you. The public outcry that followed his sentence was unbelievable. Everyone was so angry at this unacceptable case. His case has galvanized the Egyptian literary community, and we want to stand in solidarity with them and make it not just an Egyptian cause, but an international cause. The Freedom of Right Award is a very powerful tool. Over the years, 35 out of 40 recipients have been released due in part to the pressure that's generated by this award and the surrounding publicity. Naji, we're proud to give this award in your honor. We're proud that you have the courage to be an example to writers everywhere. A heartfelt thank you. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your bravery. I gave the award news to Ahmed while visiting him in prison, and he was so excited and happy. He didn't lose hope at all. He's writing now in prison, and he's almost finishing his new novel. There is no greater freedom than freedom of the imagination. It is our hope, our optimistic hope, that giving this award to Ahmed Naji will bring him to freedom. Maybe, maybe, if we could get Ahmed released, something will change. Some other people will have hope to fight this. In cases where authorities are trying to silence these individuals, we have the opportunity to step in and make sure that their words and their stories are heard, that their face is seen, that their name is repeated. When the government tries to deny them a voice, we can be their voice.
Hello everyone. I am Mohammed Nagy, Ahmed the brother. Ahmed sent you all his, his greeting and wishes he could be here tonight. Right now, he is in solitary confinement. This is something I am living with now. This is the meaning of imprisonment. He is not allowed to write a message to be read at this important event. Because letting out message written by a prisoner is a dangerous thing. Any written messages from a prisoner in Egypt require a permit and would be subject to, to the monitoring of a prisoner administration. I think this is to reinforce the prison, the prison sense of being isolated, which is the main aspect of Ahmed's punishment. Since the beginning of this event, which our, which our entire family has had to endure, and which has also caused my older brother friend to suffer very much, I have come to see that part of his uh, imprisonment sentence is to try to deny him from any freedom, any form of joy. This is why he is banned from writing, something he has done his entire life, growing up together. I, al I was always caught him, I, I always caught sight of him, musing, absorbed in his magical world, to tell us his mystical tales. Ahmed's imagination is his perpetual game. He is not present at this event because, because of what his imagination depicted, unfortunately. Writing for Ahmed is both professional matter and life choice. And right now, he is paying the price of his linguistic choices, despite the constitutional and legal texts that in Egypt which should protect him from imprisonment. He is fighting against a status quo that does not care much about literature and the freedom of writers. At each visit, Ahmed keeps telling us about the new novel he is writing. He is not writing it the way he normally writes literature, using his computer connected to the internet and while listening to music, all of which are unavoidable in prison, of course. So he is thinking about writing as a novel, which he cannot actually write. He is imagining it like he always has. Although Ahmed has been stripped of all his fundamental rights due to, due to laws that disregard the freedom of expression, which is protected in Egypt constitution, and also in the, in the International Covenant on Human Rights that Egypt has signed, they cannot take away his right to imagination. My brother is not the only Arab who is going through this but he is the first Egyptian to be condemned and suspended for two years in prison because of his writing. Ahmed and our family hope that awarding him this prize will highlight the crackdown on the freedom of his expression in Arab world. He was not punished for some sort of political activism, but for writing a novel in which the character do what normal people all over the world do. For this, court decided to sentence him to harsh experience behind bars. Young Egyptian author was forced under this condition to fight a personal fight. He stepped into this crisis to see the free space for expression. His case, his case could be a chance for us all to amend oppressive laws in Egypt. Since the beginning of this absurd event, I have been reflecting on, Ahmed review, on Ahmed's view of the world. I see it in the books and copies of Henry Matisse's painting, which he specifically asked for. I cannot respond for, to his request because the prison administration does not allow prisoners to have illustration, comics, painting, and their like. But this incident has shown me how strong Ahmed is and how strong his imagination is. Although he is in prison for violating the sanctity of public morals, this does not stop him from requesting a copy of Matisse's The Dance I wonder whatever the, this was another way to challenge their authority. In the end, I would like to uh, express my gratitude and the most certainly Ahmed's gratitude to Ben for all its support. Thank you.